some of the biggest news broken at that Apple meeting on Monday had little to do with Apple. It was really all about HBO. The premium cable network announced the launch of a new HBO Now online product that would give people access to programming via Apple devices, streaming for $14.99 a month. The bigger news... This is going to be the first time that HBO programming is going to be accessible to folks without a cable subscription. Apple changed the way we buy music and listen to music. Is TV and television consumption next? I think this could be a big game change, especially for cable, uh, the premium channels on cable, because if if people can can now access that through their iPads, through mm-hmm. their through their iPhones, through their, their iWatches, iWatches. You know, now all of a sudden you don't need to have that you don't need to have that premium channel. Mm-hmm. And if 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 the cable companies or even the satellite companies aren't selling those premium packages, then all you're getting is the basic. And and that's that's gonna be that's gonna be huge. But it's also gonna have an impact on Hulu and Netflix and all of on all of them because now they're gonna be in a race to make these same kinds of, of connections with Apple and Android and all the other devices. I mean, it really is another instance of how these technology companies and leading edge innovators in in, in media are trying to appeal to the cord cutters, right? This generation that either doesn't want to pay these huge subscriptions, is cutting the cord, or never got in the habit of buying them in the first place. It's funny, though, how Apple especially tends to suck up all the headlines when just a few months ago, Dish Network started offering a service. It's already out there where you can Mm -hmm. get ESPN, which I dare say probably attracts more people to cable than HBO does. HBO is big, but ESPN is even bigger. For 20 bucks, you can get them and CNN and TNT and a bunch of other programs without having to have a cable subscription either or cbs now making an online stream but the thing with hbo it is important because and they're timing it so one it's coming out just before game of thrones right and i'm looking at one of the biggest game of thrones fans (laughs) i know right love that show and that that is the big money maker for hbo one of the big money makers right now that's probably the biggest one so you know the timing is good it's not exclusive forever it's exclusive for three months yeah the length of game of thrones then roku (laughs) and and the other uh, and uh, amazon and others will have access to it too but it, it, it is important because I do think that Hollywood and maybe even eventually the news business is going to say, is cable the place we need to be? And I think what happens is that, you know, by doing these exclusives, the, the companies themselves, Apple, uh, Android, Roku, they, they get a head start. Mm-hmm. So now everyone has already bought into that subscription. They've already paid their fourteen ninety nine, And they're just going to continue to do that even when... When when that exclu- exclusivity clause is, is gone and yeah. expired, so I, I think by by HBO positioning itself in Dish Network to a certain extent, positioning themselves in that way, they're going to get that head start, and that's going to going to sort of make them the connector between the consumer and and the content provider. So the big news that Apple was hoping we would take away from this on Monday was the launch of the Apple Watch. Um, Mike, we talked a little bit this morning about what this might mean for journalism, maybe the idea that we have another delivery channel we need to be thinking about now and delivering people content that can be read on the face of a watch. Yeah, and I think that's really an interesting question, and we're probably going to have to confront it. But I must say the reviews about the Apple Watch, now that we can actually see it, the reviews have been pretty mixed. I mean, Mm -hmm. one, it's very pricey, and a lot of people were making fun of the $10,000 gold version and all all of that. Um, I don't know whether we'd really be better with it or without it. I mean, you have to have an iPhone to make it work. Um, yeah, okay, there's some health benefits and you can get headlines and you can call an Uber or whatever from it. That's all very cool. But I don't know if it's worth an extra $370 minimum to be able to have that functionality. Journalists, I don't know. How much news can you much get, news on, can the you get on the face of a watch? And we're already talking about tweeting and how much you can actually communicate in 140 characters, especially if there's a link on the face of a watch that's too tiny. And here's the part that I think is unusual is that, okay, we're talking about the watch and its small face when Apple has been pushing the larger iPhone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have bought into that. So they're going larger with the phone, but then they're also going with the watch. And you have to have them both in order to make it work. And you're having to pay this and, premium to get the to get the watch. And what's that point, watch going to do that that device that's already in your pocket can't do? So exactly, that that, exactly. that hand with the 
watch attached to the wrist, you can just as easily put that in your pocket, pull out your phone, and get the, and same. Get the exact same information. But, but, but let's just say that when it comes to Apple, one of the mm-hmm. biggest companies in the world, you can't really judge them by logic. I mean, well, that's true. true. When the iPad first came out, right. there was plenty of consternation and, and, and making fun of the iPad, I mean, it, the name, the whole deal. Basically, everybody says, you know, when they're talking about Apple, they're really good at making people want things they didn't know they wanted. So I wouldn't count and, out the and, watch. And you're right. It's, it's the brand. And it's as, as long as everyone else has it, then I feel the need to have it, too. That's yeah. a part of, 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 well, of their marketing strategy. I am going to go out on the limb, and I will be willing to be wrong if we're talking about this in a very different way six months or a year or two years from now. But I also look at what happened with Google Glass and the fact that three years ago, anybody who had Google Glass, they were among the elite, and they were going to be the next big thing. And now even the biggest fans and biggest proponents of that wearable technology – not but Google Glass looked dorky, one. and these yeah, watches they, 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 do not necessarily look dorky. They this can be true. made to look like fine jeweled watches. But you know? the real key for whether or not this takes off is going to be price. They're going to have to figure out a to way down. to bring that price down it's have to considerably come down. because at at the rate that they're at now, I don't think it's going to catch on. I don't know. They've sold millions and millions of iPhones at a premium price, well, and millions and millions leased, of iPads. They've leased yeah. a million of those yeah. phones. Well, I'm. <laughs> Perfectly willing to be wrong, and hopefully, yeah. if I am, years from now, I welcome our production staff to go back and pull this and make fun of me at will.